It's also convenient if you, you know, are installing on multiple machines. Uh, you can install on one and then move on to another one and so on and so forth. Uh, but like I said, uh, we are going to use this option. Um, we will install uh, to uh, this location. So <clears throat> before I even get going, let me browse to this, make sure it is up and running. Uh, we don't have any files in there as of yet. And then on the next screen, we will continue with the full installation. So before I do that, let me go to the link and follow follow these steps that are recommended. So like I mentioned, I will select download the evaluation. And here you can, uh, you know, browse the information and decide what you are trying to do. Uh, in our case, I need to download SQL Server 2012. Okay. And depending on uh, what option you choose, like I mentioned, you could also do an ISO image. If you have a 64-bit machine, uh, you could certainly uh, do that. Uh, I'm going to select a 32-bit version. Uh, my language is United States English. And then I'm going to click on this button. Now this thing, I did notice that um, I am running Firefox and I think I was having a little bit of a uh, tough time getting to this. So uh, maybe we'll give that a minute. And in the meantime, I'm also going to load up uh, my uh, Internet Explorer. And let me see if I can uh, <coughs> copy this link again okay and paste it here sometimes there are issues uh, with a certain page depend depending on what uh, what browser browser you are using uh, so again I'm going to uh, click on download eval I am using IE for this case download this one and then select United States English and then click on this one now, when I do this in IE, uh, I believe I should uh, I should be getting uh, something. So here here we uh, we have something. It's asking uh, that uh, is it okay to download, and I will say okay or allow. And now it's asking me where would you like to download these files. So like I mentioned, I'm going to go to um, uh, let's see uh, my computer, C drive, and then SQL install. Okay, that's where I would like to. Uh, download these files so this will take a few minutes to download so for now I will go ahead and pause the video so the files are still downloading in fact you can see that um, this one and this one is already downloaded and uh, the one on the top it's uh, it's still going uh, going along it's it's a little bit uh, it's a you know fairly big file 1.62 gigabytes okay but um, if you go to the folder uh, you can see that um, you know these two files are already uh, downloaded what I'm going to in fact do is um, um, I have these files saved in my temp drive from a prior install so um, you can see that uh, you know the uh, here are the three files the core install and land language and if you uh, <coughs> just want to show you that these are basically the same files I had uh, downloaded these in March so while this is uh, downloading I'm actually going to uh, show you what uh, you need to do on your end in fact let me go ahead and delete this uh, this folder here what it does is when you uh, when you extract these files, what it's going to basically do is uh, create that folder. Okay, so once once the three files are downloaded, you're going to come here and double click on install.exe. That is going to do uh, the uh, basically the unloading of the box. If you go back to your um, SQL installation, it uh, it actually does explain uh, this in. Uh, in detail but we are basically uh, going to um, going to do that now while this is unloading I am actually going to go ahead and pause this video again so I will be back so we are back it is almost done extracting and you can see that this is going to ctemp this folder uh, and then it uh, looks like it's done now um, 
if I go back to my temp folder, you'll notice that today, in fact, it is uh, 5.30, and this is just as extracted today. So once you're done, uh, once it's done with it uh, processing, you go into this folder, which is SQL full x86. I'm going to go ahead and actually, uh, let me close this one since we're done. And then all you really need to do is double click on setup.exe, okay? And uh, this will say uh, SQL Server 2011, <coughs> which is actually 2012. Okay, and uh, since we have uh, we had downloaded this in March, we are getting a SQL Server 2012 uh, release candidate uh, zero. Uh, the the steps are identical for the um, release to the market, but uh, just be aware of that. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, see what what happens here. I think we should be getting there. You go. So this is what they call it uh, as the SQL Server installation center there is lots of information in there um, some documentation requirements that we looked at um, other things like a configuration checker this is a uh, great tool upgrade advisor if you have an older version of let's say 2008 or 2005 you can run this separately and try to get some idea on what needs to happen I'm going to uh, skip all of this and go straight to installation okay in fact, before I uh, I run this, I do want to show you a couple of things in here. So we downloaded everything. We are using CTEMP, okay? Now, as far as uh, in the actual installation, um, we showed you that we needed to click on the uh, .exe file. Apologize for the typo. Uh, but basically, um, we are going to run the setup. Now, there are some important considerations, and we will highlight some other ones as we go along. But, uh, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, you should only install what's needed. So let's say if you're not going to be using, uh, you know, reporting services or analysis, uh, there is really no need to install that on your machine. You should only uh, go for what's, uh, what's necessary, I guess, in your case. Now, uh, one thing that you should be aware of as far as uh, best practices that you should be running SQL services under a domain account. What I mean by SQL services are things like database engine, integration service, agent service, and uh, some of the other ones. It's always a good security practice to run this as a domain uh, account, and we will cover this as we go through the installation, but I wanted to mention that. Uh, next point is the uh, the data files, which if you're not aware, uh, SQL Server had two, has two files. It's got a uh, .mdf file, which is the actual data file, and then it's also got a .ldf file, which is a log file. Ideally, these should be uh, present or placed in separate drives per database. And the reason for that is performance. Um, log file is always written to, which basically keeps transactions off your database activity. So, um, you know, that, that's going to be, that drive is going to be very high in write activity as opposed to a data file which is going to be read and write, okay? Uh, so I did want to mention that uh, this last part has to do with installation, uninstallation. So let me switch back to uh, my um, installation center, if you will. Now in here, you'll see that there are a few options uh, that you can choose from. I'm interested in installing new SQL Server standalone uh, option, so I'm going to select the first one. Now I do realize that I do have a, a default uh, instance running on this. In fact, while this is running, I can show you if I go to start, all programs, Microsoft SQL 2012, Management Studio. I've got a few things uh, going on over here. And I'll, I'll come back to the screen in a minute. But uh, notice that I do have uh, have uh, SQL Server 2012 up and running. In fact, the management studio is loading up. And I'm going to uh, show you that uh, I have a default instance 
already installed on this machine and now what I'm going to do is install a named instance uh, as part of this installation demo okay so when this thing uh, pulls up um, uh, if, if you put in a period you, you can also put in the machine name which is uh, laptop PC uh, and if I connect this will bring up my default instance of SQL Server 2012 okay if you haven't seen this you'll notice that the management studio does look a little bit different uh, they've added some colors and uh, you know streamlined it a bit uh, but now uh, I am I am within SQL Server 2012 in fact I have some uh, databases running and we have been uh, you know running some demos on that so I did want to highlight that for you now back to our setup uh, one of the first things it's going to do is it's going to ask for uh, setting up support files okay and if you get a warning or a failed uh, option which we did not you will have to address this uh, if I look in my details uh, I have all the necessary information the first time I did run this I think I was uh, missing uh, <coughs> this last one which is the dotnet uh, 2.0 and uh, I think I was missing a service pack so it did ask me for this and uh, some of the other things but in, our, in, in my case I am okay uh, with all of these so I will just simply click OK and what it's doing it's uh, setting up your server uh, essentially sort of like a doing a pre uh, pre setup so that you are able to um, move on to the next step okay now for any of these steps if they start taking a long time I will I will go ahead and pause the video uh, but um, We'll, we'll kind of play it, uh, play it by ear. So now it's saying um, I was it was looking for product updates. Right now there are no updates for SQL Server found online. So we will just go to next. Okay. This step it says is install setup files. If an update is required is found, will will be included. Um, so it is essentially. Um, what it's doing right now is uh, finding what option of SQL Server are already installed. If you were doing a fresh install, uh, you will obviously be, you know, going along with all of the files. In our case, it will uh, probably find specific files that are unique to a named instance. So it finished uh, doing its thing. Now we are on to uh, uh, the setup support rules. Okay these identify any of the problems that might occur when you actually do the installation it says failures must be corrected before setup can continue the only warning i have is that i do not have a windows firewall setting which is okay uh, if you were running this in a network you would definitely want to enable that but i am running sql in an isolated environment so i will say next okay so here is basically the main screen uh, for SQL Server installation there are a few steps uh, as you can see in the left pane I will be uh, walking you through these um, you know as as they come up now the first thing it's it needs to uh, ask you is basically you know what are you trying to do are you trying to perform a new installation or are you trying to add features to an existing installation uh, which in our case would be this one so today uh, I'm actually going to be performing a new installation so I will select that